Hello and welcome to the second part of the buildings that I'm building from the micro world. As you can see, they've all received an undercoat now and uh, I've made some decisions. I'm going to be mounting these on some black plastic card. Now it's not that they need mounting, it's just so I can build onto them and add extra walls. Another decision that I've made that you know I mentioned in the previous one is about this one. Um, as you know, it comes together as one building. But what I've decided to do is split it up and I'm actually going to make three out of it. So I shall have this front piece on one of its own. And uh, then I've got a little piece of card cut for each of the corners as well. Now I've, I've I've cut these and I've uh, shaved off all the edges to make sure that there's nothing sharp on them. And uh, basically, you know, for the price of the three buildings, I'm going to end up with five units altogether to add to the battlefield. So obviously what I need to be doing now is building these up and making them look more that each one is a complete building in its own right. Um, so I'm going to be needing to add bits to all of these. I'm going to have to make some blue foam walls to add to it and broken debris. So I'm just preparing some of the uh, debris now for my buildings. I've also carved some brick pattern into some blue foam with a lighter colour for the mortar. And now I'm going over it, dry brushing it with the brick colour, you know, to bring out the individual bricks. And also painting up some of the furniture and the planks and things that I've been making, you know, to get it ready. Another thing that I've done is been cutting up some of the plastic from uh, packaging and making it into uh, shattered glass to, to sprinkle with the debris. I will make more things as I go along, but I just wanted to prepare some. Um, so when I do get to, the, you know, start the building job, I've got some parts to work with. And then while that's drying, I can make some new things. So having given these a primer coat with Citadel um, Wraith Bone, I'm using that as the mortar underlay for the buildings. And then what I'm using is some acrylic clay to just do a, a dry brush over the bricks to bring the bricks to life. I'm going to do my best to avoid the windows and things here. But obviously if I do catch them a bit, I can uh, recover them. So that's not a big issue. There we go. So that's like the basic uh, coat on that. And I've obviously took it down the edges as well. that one now I'm going to do the same to these uh, two corner pieces so that's the three parts of that one completed uh, well not completed but the the brick reds on there and I've done all the edges I've left the inside for now I'm going to cook to this one so I'll just give this a bit of a go um, I'll light a few bits and then I'll bring you back and show you how it's looking. So having done all the brick highlights now, I've tried to be as careful as possible, but obviously, inevitably, I've caught bits of the brick that I want to keep to the uh, lighter colour. So what I'm going to do, I'm just using a, a tester pot of a very light beige colour to just touch up any of these bits where I've caught it with the brick red. I don't need to do it a very thick coat, I can just just lighten it up. You can see that's starting to take it back up now where I'd caught it. I might need uh, a couple of coats because obviously it is a darker colour. 
but it's important that I get that bit right first. So I'll work on this and then I'll bring you back. All right, so I've gone over them all now and I've touched up most of the obvious bits where I've caught the brick and vice versa. Um, there's going to be the odd area here and there, but I'm not too troubled by that. Anything too bad I can just uh, touch up when it's dry. And the rest of it, when it comes to the weathering process, will start to disappear anyway, because I can't leave it as stark as this. But uh, what it has done um, is it's tied all these buildings together. Now that I've touched up uh, all the outside brickwork um, to a stage where I'm happy with it, I'm going to start uh, painting the uh, floorboarding. Again, it'll just be a block colour at the moment. I can add any highlights or anything afterwards. So that's the kind of colour that I'm going for at the moment. This is called um, Old Wood. Panzer Aces. I just picked it up at the local boys, so, but it, it works well for wood. Like I say, I will highlight this and weather it a bit, but as a block colour for the wood, it looks pretty effective. I'm not going to paint this top one in that. I'm not quite sure what this material is trying to represent but i think i'd be safest to go with a gray color really for that one and just keep these inner and bottom floors in the wood yeah, so that's that's the colour I'm going for on that. As I say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint all of these up, same on the other ones where it's a wooden floor, and then I'll bring you back. Right, so I've painted all these up now. Not done anything uh, special for the inside. I've just took some fairly dull colours, you know, the kind of colours that you'd see in the 40s that have been fairly muted colours um, you know I've been I've been reasonably careful but I'm not too bothered this is you know a damaged building and it's it's going to have its knocks and the paintwork's not going to be great but It'll be, you know, when we start adding the washes and the dirt and stuff like that to it. Any little inaccuracies will be taken away anyway. You won't, you won't see them so much. Same with the smaller part and the two corners. Just try to break it, break it up a bit, but still with similar colours and what I'm going to do now um, is I'm going to mount this first one and then I'll mount the rest of them but I thought I'd do this one on camera I've uh, rubbed down the edges just, just so they're not too sharp and they're going to catch your fingers and I've also given it a bit of a rub on the top as well just, just to help give the glue a bit more to grab hold of um, because I'm I'm trying a glue here that I've never I've never used before. I've used UHU before, but this one says it's a contact liquid, super strong and flexible. Um, so I'm hoping it'll be you know it'll do the job okay. I was thinking of just using super glue, but I thought 
with a few knocks and with it hanging having an overhang that over time that might break if it's you know too rigid so i'm hoping that this being flexible would help with that Smear some on here. There we go. So now that we've got these fixed firmly to their bases, we can start to look at all the little bits of brickwork that I made earlier out of the blue foam and uh, some of it's green stuff, some of it's used uh, little pieces of wall that I broke up to use. Combination of things really. So what we need to do now is to build these up to make them look more viable as complete wrecks because these are the two that we're being a little bit frugal with and we're trying to make more out of them. So I'm going to start with these two. So I'm going to have to use a combination of glues. This one's a plastic piece, so I'm going to super glue this one in. So let's put a bit on this one. This one's going to need a bit of ordinary glue on it. We're going to give this more strength. build something up against it. You can see the way that it's going now. 
we're starting to build up some solid bits at, at the minute it's going to look a bit odd because we've got to start putting the debris in and we've got to make it look like parts have fell over otherwise these are going to look like you know flat walls which would be odd so let me play around with this one a bit and then i'll bring you back right so i've Start, I built, started by building up these uh, smaller pieces where I've just got the one corner. And what I've tried to do is use some of these uh, bits of wall and uh, blue foam that I carved into wall. And uh, various other bits like the tyres and the corrugated iron that I made out of plastic to form a, you know some kind of uh, cover. For troops always round I've still got quite a bit to do to this but I'm just letting it dry at this stage before I add any more detail um, because obviously I've got to sort this floor out as well and make that look more natural so that's that one this one I've gone for it being more demolished um, so there are some places to take cover, but it would probably be more suitable for a sniper team or a bazooka team, something like that. Because they can get into this corner, they can get in there and on that bit. Uh, but again, I will be doing a bit more to this and I've got to look at finishing the floor. But at the moment I'm waiting for this to dry as well. So what I've done... Is I've started work on the biggest one and what I'm what I'm doing here is I'm recreating this wall with some blue foam so as you can see I've got quite an extensive piece of blue foam going on here which I've tried to make pretty rugged and then I've also got what would have been a doorway that's fell away from this side and I've just glued that to the actual wall to tie the two in together I probably won't do the across I won't do the across piece on this side but I will perhaps build in some more bits of rubble so that's the one I'm working on at the minute when I've done that I'll cut to the other one and build the basics on the basics on this one of an outline as well so at this stage i thought it would be more useful to actually cover the story in photographs because of the nature of the build you know because you're trying things out in different areas and seeing what looks right where um so here you just see me preparing some small items to add and some uh, blue foam planks that i'm adding to this window and then i've added some curtains on this one um, of, on one of the windows and a barrel it's just basically putting little bits here and there of, of interest to make it look like it was lived in you know like some of the upturned chairs and things like that but it's it's building it together and you know putting rubble into the gaps you've got between the items here's some tires and uh, corrugated iron put together as a barrier here I'm just scattering some of the uh, plastic shards of glass that I made. It, it's basically trying to make it look like it's been occupied after the damage. Um, to tell a bit of a story. Show what ways you know the soldiers are using to get up to the platforms. By adding ladders or leaning planks against things. It, it just basically makes it a more usable building. And here I'm adding some blue foam so I don't use so many uh, bits of rubble, you know, because you can just hide that then and then you've got the pile that you wanted. It's just a more economical way of using the bits that you, you, you've made. So, you know, this process is just basically telling lots of little stories. So now it's just about adding grits here and there to tie different bits together. And, you know, if you've got gaps, add in any little bits to just to make it look more natural. Once you've done this, it, it's easier then to actually go for the main part of the floor and start to, 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 you know, bring the entire building together. But it's nice to have little areas with a bit of character to them. 
nothing says, uh, you know, character or someone's been here like a, a bottle. So I'm just going to undercoat these and put a bit of light on that for you. Whether well, you can see them now. Just put a bit of undercoat on them and then I'll uh, paint them up in different colours, probably browns and blues and greens. And I just scatter them in and among the debris, stand the odd few up in a corner and things like that really. All right, just let them dry. So I've took a little bit a uh, break from uh, building up the buildings to make some more miniatures out of scrap bits of wood and, you know bits that have come off of the uh, Sarissa build that type of thing and uh, I'm just whether you can see that building little chairs and bits of furniture out of the bits and then just undercoating them A little table I mean it's just a good way to use up all your scraps really so I'm just trying to make it look a bit more varied inside and uh, that way it looks a bit more realistic as bomb damage the only thing that I've got to be aware of is I need to make sure that I don't take up space that would be good for the troops to be in and also um, make it so it actually uh, supports parts of the building to keep them stronger but at the same time not look like that's what it's doing <laughs> but most of all what i like about this is the fact that you're using up bits that are just going to end up in the bin that one undercoated some other bits that I've been doing I am um, when I was sorting through some old soldiers I came across some uh, century boxes so what I did is I cut the top off of them put some uh, little wooden shelves in there and I thought I could have them as units in the shop that are tipped over and I'll put rubble on them and everything to blend them in a bit more but it just looked like they were shop display and then the other thing is just building a, some ladders to reach the higher part again I've just built them out of you know the bits that are over on sprues the little press out lugs and things like that these ones that I've built up now because uh, I want to paint them something that's going to match the shop and then basically what I'm doing is filling it with any little uh, bits that are left over from sprues you know ammo cases things like that crates and then I've also, I had some, uh, I think it's, yeah, dust clay over the other day. So I just rolled it into a snake, flattened it out and made some sandbags. Just one or two here and there that I might just put on the odd windowsill. So, as I say, I mean, you, you don't really need to go to this amount of trouble. But this is the bit that I enjoy. To be honest, this is the bit that brought me to the obby. You know, before I played bolt action, I just like doing these type of things, especially when you're using scrap. Right, so we've added all the um, main parts of the debris and things and walls and stuff like that that I want to add. Um, so the next thing that I want to do is to start bringing down some of the colours and adding a few washes here and there. Um, the first thing... That stands out is obviously the bricks are just way too orange at the minute for me so I'm going to be using some of this weathering powder again from Humble um, 
I'm going to start with the white one and I'm going to just use it really as a way of dusting it up. Um, just tip a little bit out. Let's start with this one. So I'll get a bit on the brush and then I dry brush it in. And the idea being I want to try and get it without overpowering it I want to get it on nearly all the surface so you can start to see what that's looking like now it's took that orange down and and it's starting to give it a more I don't know what the word for it is really just weathered and old it doesn't look like they're brand new bricks anymore. See, I'm trying to get it on every surface. I don't want to uh, make it too concentrated in any particular area. And if it if it goes on a bit like that, I'll try and brush a bit out, like on this piece. So, what's that one? As I say, it's just like the, the first layer that I'm going to do. I'm going to put washes on as well. But the thing is, it just looks too pristine, considering it's you know supposed to have collapsed in on itself and been bombed. It, it looks too bright as it is, so this is just part of the process of bringing that back down. Let's bring the next one in. It's a good idea to come from different directions as well. It just, it, I don't know, it just gives it that feeling that the uh, dust and debris is blowing around from different positions. It just gives it more, more of a realistic look. There we go. That's that one. See, it took that you know, really obvious brightness of the bricks away. As I say, it's only the first stage, but it instantly, I mean, you compare that to the bright orange of this one, of the brick, and it just tames that right down. Right, I'll, uh, I'll press on and get the rest of these done, and then when I'm ready for the next stage, I'll bring you back. So the next stage is where I've got some uh, blast damage. I'm using a bit of the humbral smoke effect now to just give it that blasted look, particularly this one, which is an obvious. But you're also going to get bits of it, um, you know, round the edges of the odd window from from the actual collapse of the building. So. 
although that's an obvious one to start with, I will be adding touches like that to windows, door frames, the odd debris. don't have to overdo it just just bits here and there where it's obvious that there was some kind of impact even after the collapse of the building and not only that of course you've got what would be the uh, smoke marks of uh, the aftermath of fires as it actually you know collapsed Some would be worse than others. And obviously any fires that you get in the windows, as with the natural thing, smoke tends to go up from the window. You know, where the flames have curled round through the window. And then it fan out from the actual rectangle of the window. I'm not going to do it on everyone, otherwise it'd look like overkill. But just here and there, it just gives it a bit more of a feel. Like I'm not, I'm not going to bother on the top windows. I'll just weather them in the normal way. that's it so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and do that on all of the buildings and then I'll bring you back at the next stage so the next stage is to add some uh, strong tone washes um, I'm starting on the floorboard areas Because obviously we want to give that the look that it's been open to all weathers as well. And this will help with that. It will help. You know, mixing with some of the dust that's on here now from the brick uh, scatter. It'll help give it that feeling that it's been walked through and... Just ties things together a bit more. So I like to give it just some uh, effects, you know, where water's gathered and, you know, trickled down the wall and left stains with all the debris and dust. Again, you know, I, I try not to overdo it, just, just suggestions of it here and there. And not, not make it look like it's, you know, a unicoat everywhere. Just certain areas where the water's pulled on it and then streaked down. Same with like smoke damage, you know, to have a little bit from the window where the rain's caught that, you know, smoke and debris on things and dragged it down. Like that. the window just very aware that I don't want to overdo it it's 
particularly effective when you put it on some of the upturned furniture because it, it makes that you know look like it's not just been placed there but it's been exposed by you know the the collapse of the building and then you've also got you know the rain water and everything else mixing all the dirt and dust together and dragging it down through it so added little bits on the ground here and there as well where it's pulled but you can see that i will show some photos at the end as well that will give you a better look For that one right I'll go through these and basically as I've said I'm gonna be just getting it in some of the areas where you would expect water to have pulled and then drag the dirt down I don't like I say I don't want to overdo it I only want it you know traces here and there just just to add to the uh, the effect of the damage of the building and to you know tie everything together really because obviously you, you've got the real the real building that was part of the kit and then all the add-ons and what i'm doing is trying to bring them together and make them seem like they were all part of the same kit um you know it's the same with uh, this one you know there's only this bit that was the kit all of this is added on same with the back of this one the entire back end and middle is is added on this one it's all the way around is added on and then obviously the same on this one here you know all of this is added so i need to bring the elements of what's added back and connect it with the actual real part of the building to make it convincingly seem like you know one complete building so i'll go ahead and uh, do some more strong tone washes on these other buildings now similar I'll, I'll be doing exactly the same as you've just watched me do on this one and uh and i'll bring you back now that i've added uh you know a lot of the dark washes on it what I've done is I've mixed up um, a very pale grey um, with just a hint of blue and a hint of the wash mixed in. And what I'm doing is I'm just touching up these little bits of the cracked pane in the window. And whether you can see that. And it just gives it the look of glass then being that separate look you know from the pet from the actual um window frame you can pick out the bits that are glass and i'm doing although it's a bit time consuming i'm doing that on the inside and the outside to keep the illusion going that it is actually glass so as you can see I've got plenty of windows in these buildings so what I'm going to do now I'm not <laughs> I'm not going to trouble you to watch for every single one of these being done because I think that would uh, <laughs> I think that'd do anybody's head in um, but I am going to go around and touch that up so I'll bring you back when that's finished Another little touch that I like to add to the buildings are some period posters. Um, and I often go hunting around on the net for appropriate years and styles of poster that I can uh, miniaturise and then put onto my models. And basically, I just print them on standard paper because I feel that works the best because... When I'm adding the watered down glue to paste it onto the wall, it starts to take the uh, shape of the bricks and stuff beyond the poster, which just gives it that bit more of the feel that it should have. So 
So I'll just put one on if, you know, for you to see. And I put plen plenty on. Let's take this one. And then I also paste more glue over it until the paper starts to soak it in and it gets weaker and then you can start to see the shape of the bricks coming through it which is the effect that I'm looking for. And it also helps to make the poster look a little bit more weathered as well that way. The other thing I like to do as well, like you can see, whether you can see on that one, like the corners breaking away a bit, you know, like it's peeled and a bit damaged. And you, the more you brush at it, the more damage you'll cause to it. Really, I mean, this one that that's good enough. I don't, I don't really want to damage that one any more than it already is. So that's that one on. And uh, I've just got a small selection to put across the buildings. I'll put another one on this side. I found um, on this one a movie poster um, for the uh, war years. of a Laurel and Hardy movie um, that was popular in uh, Holland at the time. So I'm going to put that one on just so it's a bit different from some of the other. over it so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, put a few of these others on some of the other buildings and then we'll wrap this up with some photographs so here they are completed. They've all been uh, coated to make sure everything's sealed. I've even sprayed them with varnish, and that will tie it. will tie all these posters and small things in together, and nothing's going to rub off now. So they'll look the poor. I've added a few soldiers just to give you an idea, get a feel for them, uh, how they're actually going to be used. But uh, as you can see, that they look. They look the part now, they look like they're in a battle. And that's that's what I'm really looking for with these. And, you know, when you consider, you know, what I originally paid for some of these, like £7 and £14, and what have I bought? I bought three kits and I've ended up with five builds. And, uh, and I've had fun doing it. So, you know, what more can you ask for? So uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found something of interest and, you know, perhaps giving you some ideas for things that you can do with your own buildings. If there's anything that you want to ask, please drop a comment. I always answer everything, every comment I get. But uh, if you've enjoyed it, please consider giving us a thumbs up and perhaps subscribing for when my next video drops. Thanks again for joining me. Bye.